Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. I've got a fun kite fold card for you today. I've actually tweaked the dimensions from other cards that I have seen, and I've got three samples to share with you, one of which I'm going to demonstrate with you. I'm using brand new product from the upcoming mini catalog that debuts tomorrow on August 4th. Here's a quick look at the card we're going to create. And yes, that kite fold itself does open. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below and click the bell icon. That's going to send you notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's fun fold card. We're going to start by creating the kite fold that's going to be on top of the card base. While I know it's going to be difficult to see the score and the pencil lines that I'm going to be making on here, I did want to talk you through this. This is a piece of early espresso cardstock. It measures 4 inch by 10 inch, and you're going to start by scoring it in half. Now I'm going to bring in this template because I think it's going to be a little bit better of an explanation on what we're going to do next. We are going to measure in on each side, which is exactly the halfway point of this four inch mark on both sides. Then we're going to measure down at three inches on these four areas here. And then what we're going to do is we're just basically going to connect the lines or those tick marks to make an X. This is the large grid sheet, and I absolutely love this when I'm going to be making small marks to do some scoring. There's a ruler both on the left side as well as the bottom. I'm going to take that cardstock and I'm turning it vertically. So this is the four inch side and I'm lining it up along the bottom and along the left hand side. And with a pencil at the two inch mark, I'm going to make a line. Now I'm going to make this a lot darker than what I normally would in hopes that you might be able to see it when I hold it up. Now I know you can't see it because it's off camera because it's rather large, but the grid lines here go all the way up to the top and I could easily mark it from there as well. But just for the sake of the video, I'm going to turn this and I'm going to line up that left and bottom side once again and then make another line here at the two inch mark. So now I have lines here as well as here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it sideways so that it's horizontal the long way and we are going to line it up on the grid one more time. And this time we are going to make a tick mark here at the three inch mark. Remember how I spoke to you a few minutes ago on how those grid lines go all the way up to the top? Well, now you can see they're printed right here. So this is the same three inch that's here. And then all I'm going to do is make a line here as well to indicate the placement. Now to do the other side, I'm simply gonna turn this around and I'm gonna reline it up on that grid. And then I'm gonna mark this side as well. So we've got three inches here and three inches here. That's all we have to do. And again, I know that's gonna probably be difficult to see in the video, but let's go ahead and bring in the trimmer and let's do the cutting and the scoring. I have my Stampin' Trimmer here and we've got our cardstock. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to cut from this three inch line to the two inch line, which is the center, which is going to give us a slanted line. I'm going to go ahead and open up my trimmer. There is both a light and a dark blade that's included with the Stampin' Trimmer. This one's for scoring and this one is for cutting. They navigate up and down out of the way, which is wonderful because you can keep them both here on the clear track at the same time. This black area right here is where the blade travels. So I know that's the cutting track. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this pencil mark and this pencil mark so they both fall inside that cutting track. And then you can pivot this just to make sure that they're properly aligned. Once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and close the arm and then just slice. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this and we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Once they're aligned, you can go ahead and slice. Now you're gonna see that's gonna give you this perfect point here. Now what we're going to do is the exact same thing now on this side. Now we have the actual pointed tips for the kite. Now we're going to create the score line so that we can fold it. You'll recall I mentioned that we scored it at the halfway point before we started cutting. The next step now is to make that X and that's very simple. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to connect with a score line from that pencil mark to this one and then from here to here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before when we were cutting the paper. So we are going to pivot those lines that we have drawn into the track here so that it will fall right where it's supposed to. Once you have it properly aligned, make sure you're using the light blade, which is for scoring, and then you're gonna score across. Then we're gonna turn this now, and we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So there's a mark here and a mark here. Pivot your paper so that those will align inside the track and then score.
Now, once you're finished, you'll have this. Again, I know this is dark paper, it's difficult to see. But what we're gonna do next is we are going to fold on those score lines. And I do highly recommend that you use a bone folder for this. Whenever you are making a fun fold card, you want to reinforce all the score lines. It's also a great time for you to make sure everything is as straight as possible. So there's that center score line, and then we're gonna open this up. And there's a diagonal line here, so we're gonna bend on that. And then we're going to reinforce that with the bone folder. We'll open this up and now we're going to go in the other direction on that score line and we'll reinforce this as well. I do recommend that you do this in both directions because I find that the cardstock will lay much better when we go to fold it. Now when you're finished you're going to see that the insides here are actually going to pucker towards the middle and that's what we want. So when you go ahead and push those down, they're gonna become flat. So what I like to do is I like to come in here and just kind of tuck that down. And then with my bone folder, go ahead and crease over that again. And I'll do the same thing now on this side. Once that's been reinforced, we can go ahead and close this. And you're gonna see that's gonna make that perfect kite formation. And then one last time, I'm gonna go over the whole thing to make sure that we've got nice sharp edges. I decided I wanted to decorate this panel with designer series paper. Now there's lots of things you can do and I have several other samples for you. And one uses an embossing folder. So you'll be able to see quite a few varieties. I'm using my trimmer once again, and I've got two pieces of designer series paper here. This measures one and seven eighths across the top and two and five eighths across the side. And this is a one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths inch square. I find this works best with designer papers that do not have a direction like this one. Today, because it's designer paper that's double-sided, I'm actually gonna use both sides for my card. However, if you want all the panels to be identical, you will need to cut two of these. I'm gonna open up my cutting track again. I'm gonna line the top tip and the bottom tip inside that cutting track. Once I'm happy with the placement, we'll go ahead and close that, and then we are gonna slice on the angle. These are the two pieces now that I'm gonna need for the bottom of the kite. This square, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're just gonna line it up on the cutting track again and we'll slice. These two pieces will be for the top of the kite. So let me show you how this is going to work. This is gonna be the left side. I'm flipping that over. That will be the right side. This now will be the right, and this will be the left. Because they are the exact same width, you don't have to worry that they won't align. I'm gonna be using my silicone craft sheet to help me put those pieces together. I'm starting with what will be the right-hand side of my kite, and I'm gonna use my Stampin' CO Plus to add adhesive to the back. With the straight line here in the center, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna align this, leaving a small margin of color here to the right-hand side. I'm grabbing the other piece because I wanna get an idea of where this should fall so that I make sure that I can mimic this as good as possible. I'm just gonna gently tap that in place in case we have to shift it. Now we're gonna come over to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing by adding adhesive. This panel now is gonna go on the left-hand side of this one. Now there's no perfect science to this, so you may need to slightly overlap them. And that's simply because none of us cuts or scores perfectly. Now let's add the top pieces. This piece now is gonna go above this one. Now you can leave a small gap between here or you can bunt them up together. And our last piece will go here. Now let's talk about decorating it. I'm gonna be using very vanilla cardstock since that is the color that's inside this designer series paper. I'll be using the early espresso ink pad which coordinates with the cardstock that we're using. And all my images and greetings are gonna be coming from the exact same stamp set. And it's called Beautiful Autumn. As a matter of fact, we're gonna be using the bundle. This has a coordinating trio of punches that punches out the leaves and the acorn. This is brand new in the upcoming mini catalog that is debuting tomorrow. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving a copy, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Catalogs. I'm going to ink that greeting up and I'm going to stamp that here. I chose to use a punch to punch out that greeting to elevate it on the front of my card. The Label Me Lovely Punch fits perfectly, so I decided to punch that out using this. I'm just going to center this and once I'm happy with the placement, we'll go ahead and just punch that out. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm grabbing my dimensionals and I'm gonna balance those well since I know I'm going to mail my card, placing one in each of those four areas. I'm using my Take Your Pick Pickup tool. Not only is the putty tip wonderful for picking up sequins and small pieces of paper, but the Take Your Pick tool attachment that fits on here is wonderful for taking off those paper backings. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the center of that kite fold. 
I'm going to add some other embellishments here using that exact same stamp set. And I've got that scrap paper that's here. I'm still using the early espresso ink pad. And I'm going to bring in the crumb cake ink pad as well. The one thing I love about this stamp set is not only are there outline images in case you'd like to color, there are also corresponding solid images that will fill these. Here is the bottom of the acorn, and I'm inking that up in the crumb cake ink, and that will fill this perfectly. There's also a top to the acorn, which I'm going to use in the early espresso ink, and I'll fill that top here. I'm skipping over now to the maple leaf, and I'll stamp that here. There's also another leaf design here, and I'll stamp that on the other side of it. I'm leaving room here so that I can use the punches. I chose the mint macaron ink pad because it coordinates with the designer paper and I have the solid maple leaf image. So I'll go ahead and ink that up and I'll fill that. There's a coordinating image for this leaf as well and this is Cajun Craze. Now while I have the ink pads out, I thought now would be a great time to go ahead and do the inside of my card as well. Since this is where I'm going to be doing my writing and signing for the actual inside of the card base itself, I decided to leave this blank and just add a small decor piece here. I've got that maple leaf that I'm going to stamp here, and I'm going to fill it with the mint macaron. The coordinating punches to this make it so easy. So I'm going to use the acorn punch first. I'll turn my punch upside down to make it easy to navigate. Align it the best you can and punch it out. There's also one for the maple leaf and one for our other leaf. I'm going to flip these images over and I'm going to add some dimensionals to the back side so that we can add these to the front of our card. Now I know the acorn will fit a regular full size dimensional well, but these others are rather small and this is where I like to use my mini dimensionals. And because they're small, that take your pick tool is going to come in very, very handy. So I'm going to add one here and I'll add another here to the smaller leaf. I'm going to bring in that silicone craft sheet so I can take all the paper backings off at one time. Then I can lay them right on top of here where I know they will not stick to my work surface. That first acorn is going to go down here by the greeting grateful. And then these other two I'm going to cascade here near the top. So I've got one here and then I've got another here. Now let's talk about this inside area. This is another place where you can actually put a greeting or do some signing. I didn't want to waste it, so I wanted to line this with some vanilla cardstock, but I want to give you a tip about how I did this. While I know there's a bunch of different ways, and I'm always cognizant that sometimes viewers are new to paper crafting and they don't have all the supplies, I want to give you another tip. I'm going to lay this right on top of a piece of scrap vanilla cardstock. And with a pencil, I am going to trace around the outside perimeter of this kite card. Now, if you don't have a trimmer, you can use your scissors, but I'm going to give you the same instructions, whether you use a trimmer or a pair of scissors. This is actually the trace line. So you're going to want to come in about one eighth to a quarter of an inch inside of that line and trim away the excess. Now, since my guide is clear, I'm able to line this up where I can actually see it here within the cutting track, which I know is really difficult on camera. But once I have it there, I can slide it over just a little bit beyond that, and then I can slice. Now I'm going to do this exact same thing now around all four sides. Now when you're finished, that's going to leave you this, which is going to fit perfectly inside your card. Now if you have pencil lines that are going to show, just go ahead and erase them now. And then I decided to stamp my greeting here. And since this was a card for fall and it was about gratefulness, I decided to use the thank you from that stamp set. And I'll be using the early espresso ink for that. And I'm going to stamp that here. I've also inked up the outline of the acorn just to add some continuity. And I'll do the exact same thing that I did before just by filling these images. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add adhesive to the back side. This now will go on the inside of this kite fold. I'm just looking to align it the best that I can so that it's centered and then we'll tack that in place. Now let's talk about how we're going to add this to the card base. The actual cardstock base to hold that kite is four and a quarter by 11. I did score it in half before you joined me. And just like before, I'm going to use that bone folder for that nice crisp edge. I've cut a piece of designer series paper exactly from that same suite that we did the panels on the kite. This is called Gilded Autumn. Isn't this beautiful? Now these specialty papers have a foil finish on one side and a more generic pattern on the other side, which gives them lots of flexibility. I can certainly use this well past fall, but this is the side I'm going to be using for today's card. So I'm going to go ahead and add adhesive to the back side. That's going to get adhered here to the front of the card base. This is only one eighth of an inch smaller than the card base itself. 
So the designer series paper is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Now let's go ahead and add the kite fold. And then I'll talk you through the closure and the kite strings. I've flipped this over and I'm gonna add adhesive sufficiently around the outside perimeter of this kite fold. Now you can choose to tip this in any direction that you like. So I'm gonna tip this slightly to the left and then once I'm happy with it, I'll go ahead and place it on my card. Now I do like to come on the inside and then just press and reaffirm that that's all down nice and tight. Now let's talk next about the kite string. That has to be added before we do the closure. I have five inches of this gorgeous basket weave metallic ribbon and that's what I'm gonna be using for the kite string itself. I'm going to be using my glue dots for this and you're gonna see that the glue dot is a little bigger than it needs to be for this ribbon. So I like to curl the excess to the back side. I'm going to attach this here near the very bottom of that kite fold where I know it's going to be hidden by my closure. Now there's lots of ways you can close this. Obviously you can use a glue dot, a small piece of Velcro will work, but I decided to use these. These magnetic discs I found online. They are from a company called Basic Gray. I'm gonna do my best to find the link for you and put it down in the video description, along with the link to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and the supplies. But when I open this, this is what I found. You got the plus and the minus, so the positive and the negative to the magnets. So you're gonna go ahead and pop out one of each of those. Because of the magnets, they're going to stick together, which really comes in quite handy. So we're gonna put the plus and the minus together. Then what we'll do is we'll take the tool and we're gonna remove the paper backing from here. Now there's already adhesive on these, which makes them super easy to use. I like to use my take your pick tool to help me with the positioning. And then I'm gonna place this right over the very top of that ribbon, making sure that it's going to clear both sides and won't be visible and press that in place. Then I'm gonna take off the paper backing to the top piece. And now that they're stacked together, I know I'm gonna have proper positioning. So all I have to do now is close the top of the kite fold and then press. And then you can see here, it's going to pop right open. This allows the receiver just to have a good time with it opening and closing without damaging the fold. Now let's talk about the bottom of this kite to finish it off. Now there's several ways you can adhere the ribbon. Obviously one of them is liquid glue, but since we're doing the video today, I didn't wanna to have to wait for the glue to dry during your demonstration. So I'm gonna be using glue dots. And I wanna give you some tips about them if you prefer them as I do. Glue dots are very, very sticky. So even if you touch them, they'll remain sticky. So I like to ball it up in a little tiny ball. And then once I have it where I want it, I put it back on my take your pick tool. I'm then gonna position this ribbon how I want it to go on the actual card base itself. So I'm gonna kind of go up like this and I'll put my ribbon here. I'm tucking that glue dot up underneath the ribbon using that piercing tool to help get it in place. Now, if there's any glue dot exposed, don't worry because the next step after this is gonna be quite helpful. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing now in a couple other places until I have the positioning that I want. Typically a kite would have bows, but since mine has more of a fall field, I wanted to stick with that theme. I took the beautiful braided linen trim and I made three individual ties in a single knot. And those you'll see here. I'm gonna add glue dots to the back of these. Now, just like before, the glue dot might be a little bit bigger than what we need. I do like to use my take your pick tool for this because these are rather small, curling what I don't need to the back. The first one is gonna go right here below the bottom opening of the front of the card. You wanna make sure that this is not being impeded on so that it can be opened. And then we're gonna add our second one a little bit further along. So I'll add that one here and you can add them right over the glue dots if your glue dot is exposed. So that's a great way to use that extra sticky area to your advantage. And then finally, I'll put my last one here near the end. Finally, let's go ahead and let's add our card base to the inside of the card. A great spot for you to add your handmade greetings as well as your signature. I'm gonna open up the card base itself and then this will go down inside. So not only do they have a beautiful presentation on the outside with their kite fold, you also have a great area on the inside to sign and leave your own greeting. Now I promised you two other cards. Let me share those with you. This one uses the stamp set, ridiculously awesome. And on the inside of this card, I added another greeting from another stamp set. But all I did was I used the Stampin' Blends markers here to highlight the word faith, just to bring some emphasis to my greeting. Same thing here, I used that magnetic closure and I've got the words, you got this, from the same stamp set for the inside. The designer series paper is from the Artistry Blooms. And if you haven't taken a good look at that paper in the catalog, I'm gonna encourage you to do so. It's really beautiful. And on the inside, 
I've used a greeting from the stamp set Strong and Beautiful. Now you might be looking at those white areas wondering how I did that. Now that was a bit fussy, but instead I cut small strips of cardstock and I just glued them in place to create those perforations in the kite folds. Finally, I have one for Christmas and this is the one I've kept simple. I used thick Whisper White cardstock so that this would be nice and sturdy and I embossed it with a beautiful snowflake embossing folder called Winter Snow. The beautiful snowflake splendor suite that debuts tomorrow is going to include this beautiful blue glimmer paper, some faceted gems, and lots of other goodies, including this ribbon. And just like the others, I did use the magnetic closure. These little tiny mini sequins actually have adhesives already on the back of them, making them easy to use. And just like the others too, this one does open up to a full size card. I would love to know which of today's cards is your favorite. Would you leave me a comment below? And if you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, it certainly helps. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.